Namaste. <laughs> Why am I laughing? I don't know. I'm just happy. <laughs> it's three o'clock in the morning. I got up about an hour ago, made myself a cup of tea, and read the comments on the site here on the videos, and replied and answered some emails and whatever. Now I'm ready to make a video. What? What am I going to talk about? You know, I never know when I sit down. I have a vague plan, that's all. <laughs> well, in the last verse of Atma Bodha, it talks about how avidya, nescience, or maya, that which is not, is beginningless and inexplicable. And this was one of the reasons why I suspect Atma Bodha was not written by Shankaracharya, probably by one of his disciples. Or another idea is that it was written as an introductory level text, which is one of the reasons why it's so suitable for our channel, because although we want to discuss the Upanishadic wisdom, we can't really go into the Upanishads themselves because they are meant for disciples. They are meant for renunciants. They are meant for those living in the forest, actually. So, because people aren't qualified, it's not appropriate to talk about them online, in public, only in private, in the ashram itself. So anyway, why did Brahman create the world. Because the world is maya. The world is avidya. The world is ignorance, an illusion. It's temporary. It contains suffering and so on. You know, and, and no real uh, religious ontology addresses these questions. This is because of a lack of deep knowledge of Brahman itself. What sparked this was reading one sentence by Shankaracharya in which he summarizes why Brahman creates the universe. Why? For his own self-realization. Think about it. Brahman is one, non-dual, boundless, qualityless, not related to anything else, alone. And there's a Upanishadic quote, Brihadaranyaka Upanishad says that in the beginning, there was nothing. And Brahman said, he knew himself. And he said, I am Brahman. But what is Brahman? How does Brahman know himself? How does he know what he is? Because in the Brahman's space, there is nothing nothing else except Brahman. You know, just like if you want to see your face, you need some instrument like a mirror that you can hold up in front of your face and say, oh yeah, there I am. You know the story of Narcissus. Narcissus is a Greek figure and uh, he was living in the forest, totally innocent, you know, and one day, he's going to get a drink of water out of a stream or pond. And he sees his face reflected in the water. And he thinks it's somebody else. And he falls in love with his own reflection. So this has a deep meaning. And the meaning is, Brahman creates the world to know himself. This is so deep. 
because the world, you know, is full of living entities, jivas, those who are born in many, many different species of life, both those that are visible and those that are invisible. So these different species of life all have different qualities of consciousness, mind, and senses. And they, as an aggregate, huh, the sum total of all living entities, which is known as Hiranyagarbha, is like a mirror that reflects Brahman to himself. So, why does Brahman create avidya? Why does he create maya? Why does he create the world? So he can know himself, so he can realize himself. That is why, deep down, everyone's actual purpose in life is self-realization. Because the cause is visible in the effect. If the cause is one and his purpose is to realize his self, then all the beings that he creates are going to be the same, isn't it? We all think of ourselves as the principal living entity among all living entities. <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. Huh? This is the nature of ego. Ego means I am number one, isn't it? I take care of myself before everything else. I uh, follow my purposes. I pursue my goals. And what are those goals? Well, you can boil it all down to knowing oneself. That's one of the hermetic axioms. Know thyself. And Ramana Maharshi used to always teach self-inquiry, atma-vichara, in the form of, who am I? Who am I is a very deep question because it includes, by extension, what am I? Why am I here? What is this place? Why is everybody else running around? <laughs> what are they doing? Huh? What should I be doing with my life? Uh, the existential question, what should I do now? And really the answer is, realize yourself. Know yourself. Know who you are. Know what you are. Know why you're here. Know what here is. What is this world? Why does it exist? Why is there suffering? How can we transcend it? And the answer is, we have to know, number one, that we're a jiva, we're a living soul, and that we are here to realize ourself. Now, the thing is, there's innumerable other living entities all trying to realize their selves, and because of avidya, because of ignorance, they are at cross purposes with one another. They conflict with one another. That's why they're suffering. Suffering is a side effect or a consequence of individual will. Because one person's idea of self-realization is sitting calmly and meditating. And another person's idea of self-realization is starting a war. See? Depending on their level of intelligence, their level of self-realization. So, you know, I want to be healthy. I want to live long. But then there's bacteria in my body that would kill me if they got the chance. See? They're trying to realize their selves. And I'm trying to realize myself. Our purposes conflict only because of the difference in bodies, the difference in intelligence, the difference in self-realization. 
So, what to do? <laughs> In the beginning of the second chapter of the first part of Brihadaranyakapanishad, it's stated that Hiranyagarbha, who is the sum total of all the living entities, false ego in the universe, he identified with hunger and death. He is hunger and death. Hunger and death are identified because hunger leads to death. Shankaracharya comments on that verse that when one becomes hungry, he immediately thinks of killing other living entities to get food, isn't it? Whether they're animals or plants or whatever. So in this way, hunger leads to death. And if hunger is not satisfied, that also leads to death. So the individual is faced with the choice of, shall I die myself or should I kill others and eat? This is why sacrifice is necessary. This is why the worship of the fire is necessary. Fire is hunger. The fire in the belly, huh? fire of digestion. So this fire has to be fed or it would destroy us. Similarly, we feed the fire to annul the sins that we commit in killing others to feed ourselves, to satisfy our own hunger. So hunger and death are inextricably intertwined. And they are the theme, especially in the early universe, when there is only Hiranyagarbha, because he's like the first created being, Virat. Uh, we talked about Virat back in the series on Mandukyopanishad, because he exemplifies the consciousness of the senses and the world, Jagrat. So he is the first being that is conscious of body and senses. Therefore, then he becomes Brahma, the creator and the incarnation of the mode of passion. Because this passion is hunger, isn't it? Passion is desire. I want this. I want that. I want to experience such and such. I want to possess such and such. So this is the cause of the suffering, that I want this, you want that, and our purposes clash. But deep down, the real purpose is self-realization. It's just that I conceive self-realization in one way, you conceive it in another way. And so apparently on the surface we clash, but deep down, the motivation is the same because we are all reflections of the original purpose of Brahman in creating this world. So just like some of the modern telescopes are made up of multiple mirrors, you know, like the James Webb telescope out there in space has, I think, uh, seven big mirrors and the other telescopes under construction in Chile have up to, I don't know, 20 or 30 mirrors, you know? It's crazy. But these mirrors all put together give a very clear and deep picture of the universe. Similarly, why Brahman created so many living entities is precisely so that in aggregate, in combination, all together, they give a clear and complete reflection of who he is. So this is why Maya is created. This is why the world is created. This is why all the individual living beings are created and why we all have deep down the purpose to realize ourselves. 
Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>